Hi, my name's Grace Graham. I'm the founder and CEO of WorksBar. We support organisations across the UK with solutions to support the mental and physical well-being of employees at work. I'm also an ambassador for the Prince's Trust, who helped me set up WorksBar uh, about six years ago now. And I'm here to talk to you about some helpful wellness tips and rituals that you can implement into your daily life to support your well-being. I'm also here with two wonderful experts in their field, Katie and Eve. It'd be lovely for you to introduce yourselves and tell, tell us a bit about what you do. Thanks, Grace. So, um, I'm Katie Screen. I'm a nutritional therapist. I specialise in women's health, but I've been working in the wellness industry for the last 12 years. So I'm also a personal trainer and a lifestyle coach. And hi, my name's Eve Kalinic. I'm a nutritional therapist, author and podcaster. My specialised area in nutrition is gut health. I've written two books on the subject and really want to educate people around why gut health is so important. It's finding small pockets of time to be still, I think is really, really important throughout your day and it's been really beneficial for me. So in the mornings when I get up, it's really important that I do a bit of meditation. Um, and as you were saying about kind of making it simple, you know, if I have time, some days I can do a lovely 30 minute meditation, but if I'm really busy and have a lot going on, I might just do five minutes of grounding. And just having that time to be still and centre myself makes a huge difference to how um, I really feel throughout the rest of the day. You know, we are so bombarded with so many things going on, we forget to put ourselves first. So yeah, I love the I fact know. you have that non-negotiable at the beginning of your day, but yeah. you make it work according to what is going on for you. Yeah, exactly. um, and certainly for me, you know, I definitely have to prioritise some exercise. Um, it doesn't have to be exercise in, in, in a hardcore workout, it can just be that I go out get outside. If I've got a busy day at home working, I just love to get outside, move my body Wonderful. and just kick start. So I, it, it just gets those endorphins going. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, they feel like if they're going to do anything like meditation, they kind of have to be doing it for hours yeah. for it to have any effect. But actually it's the cumulative benefits of a lot of these things that build up over time. Even from like a nutrition gut health perspective, mm -hmm. One of the most simple things you can do is slowing down and chewing your food because yeah. that can alleviate some of the more simple digestive symptoms like bloating, gas, reflux, all of these things. A lot of people feel already overwhelmed, yeah, particularly around the concept of wellness. I think feel like they have to like, you know, do all these things or buy mm -hmm. these supplements and actually just doing that is a really again, becomes like a ritual. I couldn't agree more with that. I think it's so important also, when I think about kind of physical health, when we advise our clients and employees at work, stretching is so key. So if you don't have time to do a workout first thing in the morning, think about how you can incorporate small bits of movement throughout your day, especially if you're sat at your desk for so many hours or standing. So, you know, stretches that are great for your, you know, reducing tension in the upper part of your body or the lower part of your body and just incorporating those like every few hours at your desk makes a significant difference. You actually have a moment to think for yourself and it's just that taking it taking a step back and I do believe that we all need to incorporate that and it is it's so simple and we need to do it with guilt free as well. Yeah, there needs so to be yeah, <laughs> no guilt associated mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. it, you know, we need to carve out time. Generally we want to be consuming like 30 or more plants per week, so different mm -hmm. types. And so for a lot of people think, blimey, they have, that is a lot of different plants that I've now got to think about eating. But there are really good hacks. So making up nuts and seed mixes, again, it's a ritual that you can put onto your porridge in the morning or sprinkle over salads or soups or something like that. And you've got like five or six different types. So interesting. And I think both you have said, and this is just, you know, I think people think they always need to take things out, but I think it's just those simple things of putting a couple of extra things into yeah, your agree. life, maybe on a, a spiritual or mm -hmm. physical level or more thinking about the actual foods you're eating. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And it's thinking about, for me, you know, I love this time of year because it's sort of, it's when the year starts to open up when we feel yeah. that sort of, that there's light brighter and brighter and it's like what can we add in mm -hmm. to make our bodies thrive from the inside so that we feel better on the outside and you know it's it's I think everyone is striving for perfection and I think what's really important is trying to create that balance. Yeah. Come springtime obviously we've got more kind of light exposure which is really important for our circadian rhythms and a lot of the time 
you know, we we ostensibly push back against that mm -hmm. because we're on the devices, so yeah. we're exposing ourselves to all this light late at night, which really messes around with circadian rhythms. There's a lot of data around that and how that contributes on a negative way to our health and well-being. Is that something you talk about in your Well, we do work? advise clients that if, for example, you're working at home, yeah. that it's really good. It's within about 30 minutes of waking up, actually, it's really important to get outside, even if it's a cloudy day, and get some light because it really helps to get you in, like you said, you know, it really affects your rhythms and yeah. just really, really good for your mental well being. Just thinking about like other kind of little rituals that you can do to end your day, um, we advise our clients, especially if you've been sat in the same position for so many hours and you're feeling a little bit tight in the body, to have like a really lovely warm bath with Epsom salts. Yeah. And Gorgeous. The magnesium and the Gorgeous. salts just helps to really mm -hmm. detoxify your muscles and I think again it's nice to create that small ritual so it's something where you're giving back to yourself, you know, just being loving and kind and having a moment of stillness, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. So I love, I love a bath and a few drops of lavender oil or eucalyptus and having some candles on, watching a podcast or just, you know, just being still. Absolutely. That's a really lovely way to kind of close the day down. So we've got some questions from the customers from the White Company. Katie, would you like to read yours? Absolutely. Yours? So, what time would you say is best to eat breakfast in the morning? Best time to eat breakfast. Of course, every body is different and there is no one solution that fits all. But my guidance here would be to make sure you are creating a fast overnight and your, your, the aim would be 12 hours overnight. So thinking about um, you know, your last mouthful the night before, the first mouthful in the morning, and then having your breakfast within an hour of waking up. So for me, I, you know, I get up at six o'clock in the morning, I quite often do a little bit of exercise, but then I would always prioritize having something to nourish and um, give my body a little bit of a kickstart at around about sort of 7, 7.15. Can you talk to us about the gut-brain axes and ways in which we can nourish this from a food perspective? The gut-brain axes is essentially how the gut and the brain communicate to each other and it is a bi-directional relationship so our mind, our brain talks to our gut and uh, in the reverse our gut talks to our brain and it does this predominantly through the microbiome, which are all of the trillions of microbes that live in our guts, which is kind of really hard to comprehend. But a good analogy is that the microbiome is about the same size and weight as the brain in our head. So you can kind of visualize that a bit more. And that gut-brain axis deals with things like it helps us to support our mood. So I think a lot of people are quite surprised to know that 95% of our overall serotonin production, which is dubbed the happy neurotransmitter, is produced in our gut by all these tiny microbes. But in terms of how we can support our gut, really, and our gut to brain axes, is using foods that are gonna nourish the microbiome. So first things first is fiber, which we find in all plant foods. So that's whole grains, vegetables, fruit, nuts and seeds. And we want as much diversity in those sources as possible. Also phytochemicals that we find in um, kind of high amounts in things like spices and herbs, even dark chocolate um, is a high source of phytochemicals. So getting some of those in our diet as well. And then I'm a big fan of fermented foods because these provide a natural source of beneficial bacteria that's cultivated through the fermentation process. So getting as many of those into your diet will definitely help to nourish that axis. What are some of your top wellness tips to ensure optimum health in the workplace and tips on dealing with stress? Um, I think, you know, it can be really hard to find balance, especially when, you know, you've got a family and, you know, just work-life stresses, it can be really hard. But if you can think of small ways that you can kind of implement moments of stillness throughout your day. So when I'm planning my schedule for the week, for example, I'll put in small pockets of something I can do that can support my mental well-being and something that can support my physical well-being. So that might be, um, you know, for example, with me, I wake up slightly earlier to do a small 
small meditation or mindfulness practice. But there's wonderful breathing exercises that you can also implement. One is the Three Minute Breathing Space by John Kabat-Zinn, which is incredible. So it's a really wonderful, short, three minute breathing space. And it enables you to basically go within and be centered and um, be in the present moment. So you might want to set a reminder on your phone for maybe the afternoon. So it just makes you stop and basically recenter yourself. So that's something that you could think about doing. And similar, similarly, um, when you're thinking about your physical health, you can do the same thing so making sure that you've got pockets to stop where you can do some really wonderful stretches at your desk or at home that will really help with reducing tension and in turn will also increase serotonin and just make you feel good the movement always makes you feel great so yeah girls this has been so nice I mean it's just been so nice just to hear your points of view and your your tips and your guidance and I think we're all in agreement that it's so important to put yourself first and certainly um, you know don't feel like you need to take on everything just baby steps to start thinking about nourishing your body on the inside start thinking about your body on a physical level as well and um, you know whatever you can is just making time for yourself so that you feel um, important you feel good and you're prioritizing your wellness um, I think that's really key for, for the year ahead. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, but it's been lovely to speak to you, Katie and E. Thank you so much, and thank you to The White Company. It's been a pleasure to share our knowledge and experience yeah. with the customers. Um, so thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks.